Godot 4 has introduced a new feature for shader which is called shader preprocessor. If you are familiar with programming language like C or C++, you are already familiar with this concept. Preprocessor statement will not run in runtime. In fact, they change the code before compiling that. Just stay with me and I will tell you what I mean. Here I prepare for you some example. So let's take a look at the first example. Each preprocessor command starts with a hash symbol. And each preprocessor command should be written in a single line. If you use multi-line command, you should use backslash. And also you should not put semicolon at the end of the preprocessor command. For example, here I define a preprocessor variable which is called color blue. And here I create a if statement. Here define function will return true if color blue is defined. And if is it not defined, it will return false. After if statement, you can put else if and define another condition or you can put else. But important thing is that each time you use if statement, you should end that with end if. So now let's check what will happen if I change the color blue to red. As you can see, its color has been changed. You can also undefine this variable by deleting this define or you can use undef command. But now let's discuss what is the real purpose of the preprocessor. In fact, what will happen in this case is this. When I define color blue, my shader code changed to this. And this has happened before shader code compile. And then when I define color red, my shader code is like this. And when none of them is defined, my shader code is like this. This is like to write three different shader code by yourself. And each time you need one of them, you grab that and use that. But with the help of the shader preprocessor, you don't need to do that. One of the most important application of the shader preprocessor is when you want to write game for mobile or PC. With this, you can change your shader code easily. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. With define, you can also replace some part of your code. In this example, when I write color green, it will replace with a vector 4, which is correspond to color green. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Here I define var to be 1, and then I check if the var is 1, the output color would be red. And if the var is 2, the output color would be green. So now let's change the value of the var from 1 to 2. As you can see, the output color will change. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. Actually, you can define some kind of function for your preprocessor command, which can take some input. In this case, the bright function will replace what number you put in that with this vector 4. And as you can see, Godot logo is more bright. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. One of the nice features of the preprocessor, which can make life a lot easier, is that you can include something in your code. For that, you should write a piece of code which you want to use in a resource file which is called shader include. Here I added a new shader include resource type and I write this function which generate random number because I need that a lot in my shader code. So after that I include that in this file and I use that function. Just one thing you should note is that when you use include in your shader code, if the name of two function or variable inside two different include are identical, the shader code will give you error. So you cannot have two random function with same name in two different include. In another word, you should be more specific about naming your function. So let's see another example. You can also put include preprocessor inside if statement like this. And I think you can understand that. You can use also include file to change a variable inside many shader files. For example, here I created a system shader include file, which include information about my system. And here, if I change this file, it can modify the behavior of the shader code everywhere it has been included. And finally, one thing which maybe I cannot understand well is that you cannot change the value of the preprocessor at runtime. I don't know if I miss something or it is not possible or this feature will be added later in Godot. Please, if you know something about this, let me know.